This is MRN Out Loud, brought to you by Hercules Tires. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of MRN Out Loud. I'm Woody Kane. What a story from over the weekend. Rain delayed the Xfinity race until Sunday. Then Josh Berry won it, his first win at the Xfinity Series level after winning almost everything in sight at the late model stock level over the years. We'll talk with Josh about the win and what's ahead. A little bit later on, the Cup Series heads to Richmond this weekend. William Byron will be along to offer up a preview for that race. It's all ahead on MRN Out Loud. Stay with us. Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there no matter where the road takes you. Go to HerculesTires.com. There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTires.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Josh Berry is with us now, the most recent winner in the Xfinity Series. He drives the number eight Camaros at Junior Motorsports, got his first career National Series win at Martinsville. And boy, Josh, I know that still has to put a smile on your face, even a few days removed. Oh, definitely. It just, uh, just was really unbelievable. Um, as a short track racer going to Martinsville, I, I definitely you know, felt more comfortable than, uh, than some of the other places, obviously, because I had at least been there. But experience series of stuff and uh you know everyone that i'm racing they got a lot of experience there as well so um i definitely feel like it it gave me a little bit more of an opportunity a little level playing with the field i guess in a way but it's just still unbelievable to to accomplish that i mean this uh this opportunity was so big for me and uh, such a big deal that i think um you know in our eyes if we would have got some top fives you know some good runs i think that would have been a success but to win one of these races is just it's just a home run and i mean we knocked it out of the park now i know you're on a limited schedule this season and the reason uh, has been reported as as funding and dale jr has said that himself but now i see where marcus lamonis is saying hey josh hey jr what about me i could be on the side of the car is that going to happen i don't know it's uh it's definitely a possibility something we're working working for um you know it's like uh just amazing. You never know what opportunities can come about when you win a, win a race like that. Um, just, you know, really for me, I'm just really thankful to be doing this. Thankful for the partners that we have and, and uh, just want to figure out a way we can keep it going. I think that's what all of us want to do. It's just, uh, just figuring out a way to make it all make sense and, and keep us going. I think, um, you know, for this year, it's going to be hard, hard to fill that out. I mean, the, you know, with, you know, there with Sam's schedule coming up and, um you know that's, who you're that's who you're fun. sharing the car with yeah yeah, yeah. i mean that, i don't see anything changing there but you know um, you never know what could come after that well let's talk a little bit further back because this was sort of a storybook road the late model guy makes good and gets the big opportunity on the big stage and, and pays it off with a victory but tell us about the journey from there to here because you probably have not even heard the overnight success phrase tossed around too much because it was a lot of overnights to get to this point, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've been a part of the late model program here at, at JRM for 10 years now. Um, raced a lot, a lot, raced a lot and won a lot of races. And, you know, it's, it's funny. Um, you know, when I first moved here, I, I worked at, I worked at JRM in the, in the Xfinity shop and, watched the cars and I, I, uh, did pit practice. I drove the pit practice car, glued up all the lug nuts and stuff for pit practice. So I've kind of seen it all come full circle. So, um, just been an amazing story. Um, you know, we've, I've been thankful enough the last few years to have a ton of success in the late model car and achieve a lot of things that we never thought were, were possible for us. And, um, you know, that led into this opportunity and, Man, it just it just feels so amazing to win for all these all these guys here, guys and girls at JRM. I mean, they they all work so hard and to uh, to hang a banner banner up in the shop and it's just, it's a pretty special deal. You mentioned uh, a moment ago about uh, touching on your previous success at Martinsville and folk, for folks who don't know, you dominated the annual late model race they had there back in 2019. I think you led wire to wire in that one, if I'm not mistaken. But I wanted to ask you about something else you just said, talking about the jobs you were doing at Junior Motorsports along the way. And now you tell me if this is true or not, because I heard somewhere that at one point you were a bank teller waiting to get uh, a ride. Is that true? 
<laughs> well, it, when I was uh, in high school, I, I was a bank. I got a job through a business class that I had or whatever, and uh, and worked as a bank teller. And I actually really enjoyed it. But um, you know, that was about the same time that I got this opportunity with with JRM. So I uh, I quit that and moved to North Carolina and began racing. So I've kind of <laughs> done a number of things <laughs> in my life, whatever. It feels so long ago now, but uh, yeah, I've uh, been a, been thankful to uh, do a lot of things. Yeah, I, I would have liked to hear that conversation. I hate to do this, but I got to go drive race cars. I'll see y'all later. Was that kind of like what it went like? Yeah, they were pretty. <laughs> uh, they were pretty supportive of, of it. You know, it was kind of <laughs> ongoing there for a couple months, like back and forth. I was leaving, and then you know, I went out, come down to it. They were a little disappointed to see me go, but I know they were excited for me. Absolutely. And it sure was exciting on Sunday at Martinsville. Dale Jr. said it made him cry. Uh, Noah Gregson said you are a legend on the short tracks. The emotion of this thing from not just you, you said your family was there, or at least some of them were there. I mean, just it had to be just waves coming over you. And I, I bet you haven't gotten over it yet, have you? No, definitely not. It's still it's still sinking in. Um, gosh, Martinsville is such a special place. And, you know, uh, I, uh, I know that, you know, in a lot of people's eyes, they're going to ex expect me to, to run well at a place like that. But it, it was so special for me to, like I said, it was, it's close enough to home that a lot of my friends and family were be able, were able to be there. And um, it just really means a lot. Martinsville is a special place. I think all of us short trackers, you know, love, love going there and love, love um, racing there. And I think, um, you know, when I won the late model race there a couple of years ago, I think that that was a huge uh, weight off my shoulders accomplishing that because in the late model stock world, that's that's the pinnacle. That's that's the race. That's the rate that, you know, everyone, um, no matter how much set success you have in a late model stock, you're always judged off of have you won Martinsville? That's, the, you know, what about Martin? You know, so to win that, that was that was huge for me personally, just from the the work that we put in and be able to accomplish that and go back in the expanding car and and win there again i mean it's just truly unbelievable now you are also the 2020 uh, advanced auto parts national champion in the late model stock cars the weekly series that run all over the country but look forward for us a little bit now if nothing changes what does the rest of your calendar and your schedule look like what are some of the things the highlights that you can tell us about going forward if everything stays the same yeah so right now um i've had six more xfinity races uh the next one being talladega and, uh, you know, once that opportunity is, or we're, we're done with that, you know, I might go back racing late models. Um, I'm just going to run, uh, you know, here or there, run some, some of the ad advanced auto parts, uh, series races, you know, Hickory, wherever, and do some of the car store races and, and kind of set up again for, uh, running Martinsville again in the fall on that, like I said, so we'll, we'll, be, we'll be back there. That'll be, that's like I said, we always kind of position, position ourselves to, to go to go run there and, and do well so you know like i said if 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 nothing changes that's what i'll be doing now the good thing about talladega is that makes you dash for cash eligible i think coming up uh, a little bit later your teammate noah gregson won that one and had the big cardboard check that would help the budget a little bit wouldn't it no definitely um you know whenever i got this opportunity and kind of figured figured things out, realized that, uh, you know, I was going to get the opportunity to be in this dash for cash race. That's a big deal. Um, it's a lot of money. Xfinity does a great job with, with their series and supporting, supporting it. And, um, it's just a great opportunity for us. You know, uh, Talladega is kind of, uh, you know, it, it's going to be a challenge. You know I mean? It's kind of, we all know, we've all seen Talladega and how things can play out, but we stand as good a shot of anybody's winning it. Well, you can do everything right there and still not come away with the win. Let's wrap up with this, Josh. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that this was also the first uh, Xfinity win for your crew chief, Taylor Moyer. And you talked a lot about the crew uh, after the race. But just for folks who aren't in the same world that you are driving race cars for a living, how challenging is it for the, the team to work with different guys all the time and, and, not, and not have an opportunity to get in a rhythm? No, I think it's big. Um, yeah, th thankfully uh, for uh, us this year, you know, how the schedules worked out. And I think, you know, you know, Taylor's going to have me at the beginning and then Sam for the second half of the year. And um, they're just a great group of guys. Taylor does a really good job. He's had a ton of drivers, ton of, you know, and, and really just a lot of, a lot of bad luck. Um, you know, just, I followed them and just know they've had a lot of, a lot of just kind of random issues and here or there. So like, and they've always kept their head up that whole group just really, um, 
he really works hard. They're really passionate. And like I said, I, it really meant a lot to me to be able to give them their first win. That's really cool. Josh, congratulations. Hope for continued success for you. And uh, try and get that big dash for cash check at Talladega. That'd be really cool, too. Thank you, Woody. I appreciate it. All right, there you go. That's Josh Berry, the winner at Martinsville. Look for him on the track when the Xfinity Series returns at Talladega. We'll take a quick time out. When we come back, we'll get a preview for Richmond this weekend. Sir, are you aware you were going 40 miles an hour? This is a residential area. Sure, but I'm on my lawnmower. Wait, am I getting a ticket? No, I've just never seen anyone top nine miles an hour on one of those bad boys. And mow their entire lawn in 30 seconds? What got into you? Well, it did fuel up at Sunoco this morning. At Sunoco, we know how to fuel peak performance. We've been doing it for American Racing for over 50 years. Fuel your best. Richmond is next, and you have a, a situation there where a lot of folks try to compare it to certain tracks. How do you think Richmond drives compared to others? You know, I I think it honestly is its own beast. I mean, it, it kind of is like Atlanta uh, with the surface, um, but then you've got some – some aspects of it that are similar to Phoenix, I guess. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's really kind of its own beast. It's, it's very low grip, um, you know, even, even lower grip in the race car than it looks. So it's, um, it's always kind of a challenge to manage the throttle there. Um, you've got to kind of, you know, sometimes you're running half throttle down the straightaway just to, just to keep the tires under it um, later on in a run. So it's a, it's a challenge. Is that a place where PJ one can make a difference? Um, it, I mean, it could, I, I don't know if they're going to spray any down or not, but it's, um, it's so low grip. I feel like, you know, it's just, you're going to be moving around um, no matter what really at that track. So I'm, I'm interested to see how it is, especially during the day. Uh, Cause normally we run there at night. So it's going to be a different, different challenge this year uh, being the, during the day. Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there no matter where the road takes you. Go to HerculesTires.com. There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTires.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. That's all the time we've got on this week's edition of MRN Out Loud. We want to thank Josh Berry for joining us after his win at Martinsville in the Xfinity Series. And, of course, our senior preview correspondent, William Byron, for offering up a sneak peek at what's ahead coming up at Richmond this weekend. I'm Woody Kane, and we'll see you right back here next week for another edition of MRN Out Loud.